Today we're going to be taking a look at what is called torque, and this is related to your torque lab that you just did the other day. So this is section 8.2, the title is torque, and torque is represented by uh, the letter, Greek letter tau, and the tau looks like a, a T with a little curve down on the bottom. So that's what tau looks like, torque. We're going to talk about what torque is the causes of torque, and then get into a couple of mathematical examples that were similar to what you guys did in the lab. So here's the definition of what, what torque is. Torque is the amount of force needed to make something rotate. So it's the amount of force needed to cause rotation. So that's the definition of, of torque. If you remember, we had Eli. Eli went up to the door. Let me draw a little door here. And the door is attached to the wall, so it's a top view from looking at this door. And here is the hinge that the door is attached to. So this right here where the hinge is, this is the center, or also called the axis. Just like the Earth has an axis and the Earth has a rotation, the door has a center or an axis. And when we open the door, the door swings in an arc like this. So we're still talking about circular motion. Then Eli, what he did is <coughs> he went to the door, he was pushing on with his pinky, and he pushed on the end with his pinky, and it required a small force for him to cause the rotation. Now if he applied the same force right here, the door actually would not rotate. So he had to apply a larger force. So what we see here is we're also measuring the distance from this. We have two different radii. So here's the radius from here to here. Here is this radius. We also have from here to here, which is this radius. So the smaller your radius, the larger that you have to apply your force. And then I think I even had Eli push very, very close to the hinge. And again, this is the even larger force. If you actually apply a force to the, to the um, hinge, you get zero motion at that point because you're applying your force not to the thing that's going to be rotating, but you're applying it to the axis. So based upon this, what are the causes of rotation? Causes of rotation. The first one is the size of the force. The second one is dependent upon the radius. And a third thing that we did in the lab was we actually pulled at an angle. So this angle is going to be described as theta. So the angle of force is going to be applied, and this is going to be the theta. So if we look at the formula for, for torque, torque is going to be equal to the force times the radius times the sine of theta. 
and this r times the sine of theta, this is called your lever, or sometimes called your leverage. So let's take a look at how the angle is going to impact our, our torque here. How it's going to impact the force and how it's going to impact the leverage. So for this door, it's going to be the same torque that's going to be needed, meaning it's the amount of force needed to cause rotation. So the torque here is going to be the same as the torque here. It just happens to be this is a, a, a larger force with a smaller radius. This is a smaller force with a larger radius. Those two will balance each other out with this formula. So it's the same torque in either scenario that's going to cause rotation. It's the minimum amount of force that's going to be needed to make this door start to spin. So imagine we have our door, at a, and we're going to be applying our force perpendicular to that door at a 90 degree angle. So at a, when theta, theta equals 90 degrees. Okay, here's the door, here's the hinge, and we're going to be applying a force at a 90 degree angle. So here's my force. Here is my 90 degrees, perpendicular. If you take a calculator, make sure when you're doing your calculator that you have your mode is going to be in degrees for this. If I plug in 90 and take the sine of 90, the sine of 90 is going to be equal to 1. So the sine of 90 degrees is equal to 1. If I have an angle, for example, at 45 degrees like we did in the lab, so when theta is equal to 45 degrees, I draw the door, and here's the hinge. Okay, if we're applying a force like this, let's say it's the same size force as that. Let's say this is the minimum force that was needed to cause the door to rotate, and we're now applying the same force at an angle of 45 degrees. Okay, so here's my, my 90 degrees over here. Now I am going at 45 degrees. So when I'm going at an angle, I actually have two directions in which the force is being applied. Part of my force is going to be going upward like this, and part of it is going to be going like this. So I actually have a force that's going to be going in the y direction, and a force that's going to be going in this x orientation. So if I take the sine of 45 degrees, plug that on my calculator, sine of 45, I get 0.707. So what that means is that I have decreased my leverage. So when my sine of 90 is equal to 1, okay, this value, if you can sort of think of it as being, I have full leverage now. So all my force is being applied to the door. All the force is being applied in this orientation, perpendicular, and that's going to cause rotation. All the force goes into rotation. However, when you're going at a 45 degree angle, only this part of the force is going into the rotation, and part of the force is actually being pushed into the door. So some force, and we'll say, well, it's the Fy, some force, which is the Fy, goes into rotation, and the other part of the force, in some force, which is going to be the Fx, this actually goes into the door.
So if I'm applying the same force here and applying the same force here, and this is the minimum force that's required to open the door, this door is not going to open because some of my force is going into the door, and we have less force that's actually going into this right here. So since all the force goes into my rotation, my leverage, or my L, is going to be the highest. I'm going to have my maximum leverage because it's going to be equal to 1. However, when I'm coming at an angle, this is going to be 0 0.707. So in this case, my leverage is going to be reduced. So if I'm looking at the formulas for torque, torque is equal to force times radius times the sine of theta. But if you remember, sine of theta is equal to 1, so this is multiplying it by 1. So this is my final formula when I'm at a 90 degree angle. Torque is equal to force times the radius. But let's take a look at when we're doing this times an angle that's not 90 degrees. Tau is equal to force times radius times the sine of theta. Now remember my r sine of theta is my leverage. So here's my leverage right here. What's happened to my leverage? Well, because this is my leverage right here, my leverage is reduced. If I reduce this leverage, I'm going to have to increase the amount of force in order to get the door to rotate. So it's best to apply a force at a 90 degree angle because that gives you the maximum leverage. If you're going at an angle, that reduces your leverage and you have to apply a larger force to get your object to start to rotate. So that's the first part. Let's go ahead and take a look at some mathematical examples now. So imagine that you have a wrench and your wrench is equal to 25 centimeters. Okay, you're going to be applying the force at a 60 degree angle. So my theta is going to be equal to 60 degrees. Question is, what is the lever or the leverage? So the leverage is going to be equal to R times the sine of theta. So my 25 centimeters, if I convert this into meters, it will be 0.25 meters. Remember, we need to be in the correct units here. And if I try to calculate my leverage or my lever, it's going to be um, the radius, because this is my wrench. My wrench is the radius. So imagine that you have like a hex nut right here. Okay, and you are... Here's your wrench, like this. So the center of it's going to be here. This is the length of the wrench. So your wrench length, in this case, is going to be the radius. From here to here is my radius, which is the length of the wrench. So my radius is going to be 0.25 meters times the sine of 60 degrees. So if I have 0.25, times the sine of 60 on your calculators comes out to be uh, 0.22 meters. Now compare your 0.22 meters to your 0.25 meters. What's happened is I have decreased my leverage because I am coming in at an angle. When you come in at any angle, you're always going to be decreasing your leverage. So it's best to come in whatever work that you're doing, to do it at a 90 degree angle. So if the torque that's required to turn this hex nut is going to be equal to 35 newton meters. So the torque, the units are going to be in newtons because here's your force and here's your radius. So it's going to be newton meters. Question is, 
what is the force going to be? So let's plug this into the formula. Torque is equal to the force times the radius times the sine of theta. I've been given my torque. I know my radius and I know my angle. So we just simply divide both sides by r times the sine of theta, r times the sine of theta. So the force required, the minimum force required to get this moving is going to be 35 newton meters over 0.25 meters times the sine of 60. You'll notice that the meters cancel, the meters cancel, my units are newtons, so it's 35 divided by 0.25 divided by the sine of 60, that's not right, 35 divided by parentheses 0.25 times the sine of 60, and that will give me, I guess it is right, gives me 160, one, we have two units though for everything, so it's gonna be 160 newtons. So now here's the question. If the theta is equal to 90 degrees, meaning I'm applying all my force perpendicular, what is the force required now? So we'd use the same formula tau is equal to force times radius times the sine of theta. Now remember, the sine of theta actually is going to be sine of 90, which is the sine, which is equal to 1. So I divide both sides by r, divide both sides by r. Force will equal to, my torque is equal to 35 newton meters. My radius is still the original 25 centimeters or 0.25 meters. Meters will cancel. The amount of force required to do this is going to be 35 divided by 0.25. It's going to be equal to 140 newtons. What's happened to my force? My force, if I compare these, it's higher here because I'm coming in at a, at a 60 degree angle versus it's lower here because I have a 90 degree angle. So remember, tau is equal to fr times the sine of theta. So in this case, again, this is my leverage. I've increased my leverage because I'm coming in perpendicular. So it's going to decrease the force required to rotate this wrench. That's it for torque. Next is going to be net torque.